I'm talking to Christian Bethelson, um, who is a coordinator for ex-combatants and for teaching mindfulness in Liberia. He works for the NGO uh, the Peace Heart Alliance for Conflicts, Conflict Transformation, or FACT. Uh, and I've met Christian this week in Plum Village, southwest France, and he's going to tell me a little bit about this job that he does for FACT. Christian, so ex-combatants and mindfulness training. What's the scale of this job you have? Well, the scale of my job is that I kind of want to touch a base of suffering, and also I have been to head on back, so I get the ingredients of suffering so much, and uh, come from that kind of like violent way of life, and I decided to explore that into the, the life of the ex-combatant to see how we can change our life, and, and that can stabilize us because uh, we've been to head on back. And um, for people who don't know Liberia, um, what is the scale of the, the, the uh, number of ex-combatants, the, the sort of things that have happened in Liberia that mean that you have all this work to do? You know, when the war started, so there were recruitment from both sides, all right? The government through were recruiting and uh, the both rebels were recruiting. So it's a very huge number. You're talking about over 80 percent of the uh, of the youth citizen rate that joined the rebel that, that joined the Liberian civil conflict, you know. So it is a very wide, wide, wide range of ex-combatants, you know, and also, and it's not just only uh, ex-combatants, but what affected youth also, what affected from youth and all of that, you know, so poor stigmatized and the PTSD, so it's a whole broad thing, you know, it, it's a kind of a bunch of a, 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 a problem that the country faces right now, you know, and so it is a very huge change across the country. You're talking about, we have like a, a, a 15 county, so everywhere were affected by, by war, you know, the, the Liberian civil conflict. That lasted for 15 good years. So you see, you talk about numbers. So you talk about over 80,000 or 100,000 that's combating, you know, from both sides. So you see, so it's challenging. It's very huge. So carry mindfulness into area where people are suffering from PTSD, the post-traumatic stress disorder, you know, people are disorganized, you know, and trying to reintegrate into society with, the, with mindfulness, you know, and it's just not an easy thing. It's, re it's, it's a wide range, you know. And Christian, what I didn't say in the introduction is that you are known to Liberians as General Leopard. You were a major general during the war. I think you were in the army for 27 years. Um, describe how you got from that job to the job that you're doing today. Yeah, basically, I was not really wanted to go in the army. You know, um, I only wanted the army because I needed to get a scholarship. All right, and uh, my country pronounced that whosoever joined the army will be given a scholarship. So I went to the army because of scholarship. When I went there, the scholarship all ran out. So, I, so uh, that took me for 27 good years in the army. And by that, I was like 15 years uh, uh, in violence. So we fought the war. We, we went to a, a, a huge civil conflict that almost lasted for, for 15 good years and claimed the life of over 200,000 200, people. So you see, so we went into a, 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 a Hanaki, all right, where the country was like a, a no man's zone, where people are living the life of uh, the state of insecurity. No one was secure. So I was a general in that war and we fought. It was so it, 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 it was it, it was so scary, all right. And and, and like after the war was over, and I was like traumatized, you know, from my PTSD and all of that, and I began to struggle from that post traumatic post traumatic stress disorder. I didn't know where to go, you know. And I began to take alcohol, I began to take the drug and alcoholism, you know, going around taking drugs and all that, you know. But after I stepped in mindfulness, all right, through my teacher Cynthia Jules, you know, who taught me mindfulness and all of that, I looked that into deep into mindfulness, and that changed my level a little bit. So I said, oh, but then this is a, I, I will not stabilize. So mindfulness stabilizes my brain, it, it brings me back to my conscience, you know, it, 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 it brings my mind back to my very sick, and I begin to look around, you know, and, 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 and saw the other side of life. And I said, but then, no, I'm going to stick to mindfulness. So sticking to mindfulness, you know, it brings it bring my conscience back to myself. So I decided to, I'll take that and stick to that, you know. So I'm happy with that, you know, that I can take mindfulness, you know, into that practice. I mean, you have an extraordinary story, uh, and you've you've shared some of it with me over the last few days, um, and that you should have had found mindfulness to help you with this. Um, it's it's uh, how would you explain that to people who are involved in war and conflict? How would you explain that to people who are commanding armies, even sending them off to fight? What has mindfulness got for them? You see, uh, not only them alone, they also they suffer too. Let let's see, the guys are going to the battlefront. They are going to hear them back, all right? And you find a man in a, point, in a situation where uh, you don't listen to the psyche of the people. Then the country is about to plunge into another anarchy, all right? But if you can listen to the suffering of the people, <laughs> then, of course, 
uh, peace as possible. We need to listen to the voice of the people to bring sanity and healing to the land. We don't mind because we are boisterous of our, our military mark. We have the capacity of sitting jet and other things. That's, that's nonsense. All right, listen to the people. If people cry and listen to the tears of the people, all right, when you listen to the voice of the people, I mean, you can bring healing. Because the voice of the people are the people of the nation, are the people of the country. So you need to listen to the people to bring sanity, to bring healing to the people. If you listen well, the country will suffer less. Don't be in a way that people go to war and sending kids to war and all of that. You know, you know the people? You are traumatizing the whole nation. Cease the war. We need to see the, the, the killing machine must stop. The bomb raising, all of that has to stop. Uh, the terror against women and children has to stop. What interests do you, you want to have? All right? And not listen to the voice of the people. If we listen to the voice of the people, we have a vibrant, vibrant, vibrant society. And we'll start contributing to climate change. All because we listen to the voice of the people. Christian, you're an extraordinary man, and it has been a privilege to meet you. Um, if uh, you want to find out more about uh, what Christian's involved with, the work of fact, uh, we'll give you details in the description after this video.